Barbarians, the hit Netflix show from last year with many scenes of ancient Romans speaking classical Latin. I already reviewed the Latin spoken in episode one and episode two, but now we're back for episode three. Yes, we're back. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. In a flashback, we hear the young Arminius speaking Latin. And naturally, he has a German accent. In this show, the modern German language is used as a stand-in for the ancient Germanic language that these people must have been speaking. So certain speech traits, such as the characteristics of a modern German accent, are used here in Latin. In this scene, the young Arminius and Varus are talking about something I described in this video on my other channel, Scorpio Martianus, the story of the beginnings of Rome and how it came to be. Sane quidem Arminia. When I speak Latin, I like to treat a word like quiden as an enclitic and not to give it extra emphasis. Varus here says sane quiden with some emphasis on quiden. I prefer to say sane quiden. That sounds more natural to me, but there's no reason to think that it couldn't have been a normal alternative. Passive future infinitive, deletum iri. Isn't that beautiful? I like how Waru says Gertius, and we hear that the short E sound is almost consonantal, Gertius, instead of Gertius. Both seem to have been current in the pronunciation of Latin at this time. As I mentioned in the previous review videos of this show, it's very difficult for actors who aren't used to pronouncing phonemic vowel length to maintain it. And we should definitely remember, these actors don't speak Latin. They're memorizing these lines and trying to deliver them as well as they possibly can. So they certainly should get all of our respect for that. That said, since I'm here to nitpick little things, the only word here I would talk about is Romana. I would like to hear the first Ro a bit longer instead of Romana, which is what he says, which is a little bit more similar to the modern Italian word. Arma Romana sola possut velipotens mars tex bosco ut mimi faweos here, the adult Arminius is speaking. He's praying to Mars, Bellipotens Mars. Now, as previously established, Arminius is not a native speaker of Latin. So anywhere he's not doing something that's perfectly in line with what we'd expect the ancient pronunciation to be is not only normal, but I think adds to the authenticity. That said, I think that the L in Bellipotens, which is geminated, should sound a little bit longer. Other than that, maybe the vowel that's long in the word Mars, Bellipotens Mars, a little bit longer, would be something that I would prefer to do in my own recitation. Bellipotens Mars. Tex bosco, ut mimi fawels. He seemed to say miwi fawayas instead of mihi fawayas or mi fawayas. The actor seems to fairly regularly not pronounce the H sound, and I think this might be a deliberate choice. Arminius is younger than, say, Varus, and so a younger person growing up in Rome might be someone who wasn't pronouncing H's as consistently anymore, which is definitely true. The Latin spoken, even during the classical period, Many people in the city of Rome, in fact, probably the majority, were consistently pronouncing their H's in the way that we would expect them to be pronounced in, say, English or German. However, we have plenty of evidence of several people not doing that as well. So saying me instead of mihi is fantastic. In fact, me is a normal variant. Though I definitely think I hear miwi or something like that, what it seems to be is that the actor is thinking about fawayas, that w sound, which is going to come in the next word. So he accidentally anticipates the w sound and adds it to the previous word. And this is actually something pretty much everyone does in their native language all the time. I can tell you from recording myself, even in English, my native language, on videos like this, I end up doing really silly things I don't even catch in the moment. And including this kind of anticipation of a sound that follows. So for him to do that while he's praying rather silently and quietly seems like something which could definitely happen, not just because Latin isn't the native language of the actor. 
the lovely construction, which is somewhat more old fashioned, where we have do na me, give me, accusative, and then ablative of the thing being given, we are tu te, is a lovely construction. Also, something which might be part of the actor's native language habits is instead of mea, he seems to say mia or even mia. Probably he's just saying mea, but it sounds a little bit like mia. Now, this is the Italian word mia for mine, and instead of mea. However, this is attested as being a more old fashioned version of the word. Velius Longus, for example, the grammarian from the 2nd century AD, says that words like mium for my or mine, cumircium, as well as mercurius, were all old fashioned pronunciations, which weren't current in the urban Roman Latin of his day. Interestingly, though, the change at least from meum into mium, modern Italian mio, mia, and so forth, that is a change which does happen later. Probably it's not connected to the older version. This would seem to be, if the actor was intentionally trying to say mia and not mea, it would seem to be just like the dona me virtute, a kind of old fashioned way of expressing this prayer. And if so, I think that's great. If it's an accident, I think it works just as well. I really want to compliment the actor here for saying una instead of just una, but una. The long vowel here in the word una is what gives it the meaning of together, whereas simply una would mean one of something. As noted, this actor tends not to pronounce H's. Again, I commend this because I think it is normal for many people to speak that way in this period. This character tends to use V-O instead of V-E. Classical urban Latin of this period tends to use Wester and Wertere. But rustic Latin had this war sound instead. Interestingly, this is the one which ends up being the version of Latin that descends into the modern Romance languages. For example, Italian vostro. Here the translator is doing an awesome job of giving us a sense of the various registers of speech. The modern Romance languages are not descended either purely from the classical Latin that we see in the urban Latin of most of the authors of the classical period, nor is it descended directly and exclusively from common rustic or informal versions of Latin, but rather a combination of the two. In a future video, I'll talk about the concept of vulgar Latin and how this isn't really a linguistically useful term anymore, and that if people insist that, oh, the Romance languages are descended from vulgar Latin, or vulgar Latin is what people really spoke in the time period that we're watching here, in scenes like this and not classical Latin, most of that is essentially not true. It's a much more complicated and fascinating story, and I look forward to telling you about it. Make sure you subscribe to find out. Previously, we've seen this character of Metellus use more informal or rustic versions of spoken Latin. It's not common for him to say foidum and faike, but instead he would normally monophthongize this, which is very common in rustic Latin of this period. He seems, therefore, by emphasizing the foidem, faikem, perhaps he's trying to kind of talk up to Arminius. He is a Kenturio, but there's an interesting clash here, which is built right into the language that's being used. We have a Germanic man here who has been raised as a Roman, but isn't really quite allowed to feel Roman in the show. But he's an officer, he's a knight, and he leads many other equites or knights. Whereas Metellus, he's a respectable Kenturio, but he's just a Kenturio. And yet he feels more like a native-born Roman citizen and is therefore now exaggerating this kind of language, foidem faikem, instead of fedem faikem. And given that in this whole scene, Metellus is needling Arminius, I think that's exactly what he's doing here. Barbariste. I love how well he's getting the long vowels here in wendunt, because if we say it with a short vowel, wendunt, it wouldn't be the same word. Wendunt means they sell. And also, ewadant, very nice long vowels. Yeah, they manki in todo eram oblitus. Tu es unus abiste, dubium. He drops his final 
S here, and this anticipates the final loss in languages like Italian and Nebluisca Mordaco Romanica, Romanian. Again, we hear reversus instead of reversus. A cloaca is a sewer, and the cloaca maxima, which is still used today as part of the sewage system of the city of Rome, was originally built, according to tradition, under the Roman king Tarquinius Priscus. The cloaca maxima and indoor plumbing isn't always one of the most romanticized parts about ancient Roman and classical history, but it is a really important thing that many people, including the very citizens of Rome today, can owe to the ancient Romans. And what have they ever given us in return? The aqueduct? And the sanitation. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did give us that. Oh, yeah, the sanitation, Reg. Remember what the city used to be like? Along with other things. There are two basic military words that we probably want to know about Roman formations. The agmen, which is derived from the word agere, which means to drive, is the Roman army at a march, whereas the acies is the battle-ready formation. What a beautiful elision. Quizna inok induxit. Quizna inok induxit. Beautiful and very reflective of the normal sinalifi which happens in conversation for languages like Latin as well as Spanish, Italian, and many others. Domine, sut. De was ne de tranto. The normalness with which this Segestes actor says de trandur, without the H clearly pronounced, I think is very good and reflects really well what I think a non-native speaker of Latin would sound like if he could speak Latin reasonably well. He would be imitating what he would hear. He wouldn't necessarily pronounce the H if it sounded a little bit too stuffy, especially in a situation like this. Oh, I love that word, nempe. Beautiful. I love again the consonantal sound in rationem, rationem, and there's even a kind of palatalization sound effect, so it's like rationem in the way he's saying it. Now, that could be a characteristic of the actor's native accent, but it also sounds really good, I think, for this time period, wherein we expect this short e sound to become a consonant in front of many vowels, which is attested in poetry like Virgil's, which preceded these events by many decades. And it's the dan with that really strong geminated D sounds fantastic. When it comes to vowel length, I feel like there's a distinct reduction of the final vowel length here in the word banoniae into something like banoniae or simply banoniae. Banonia. He says it nice and fast. Natural spoken Latin, of course, loses phonemic vowel length entirely, but not all at once. Even through attestations in Pompeian graffiti, we've seen that there is the shortening of final long vowels as one of the first stages of the loss of phonemic vowel length, which occurs over the next several centuries. So this sounds incredibly natural to me. Banonia me commonent. So instead of perhaps a more clear fastidiaista banonia me commonent, I love how this sounds. And I've heard that this actor has a modern urban Roman accent, which is called Romanesco, and it sounds fantastic, I think. There's no reason to say that the way that modern Romans speak Italian or speak the so-called dialect or language called Romanesco isn't influenced by the way that rustic Latin might have sounded even as far back as 2,000 years ago. It adds a really lovely variety, and the fact that he somewhat obscures the way he speaks, which apparently is part of his native accent, I think comes off as inherently authentic. Tu nem panonico meruisti. Meruisti in bello panonico. He earned his salary in the bello panonico, in the Pannonian War. Legione quinta decuma, Tiberio legato. I love that he says decuma instead of decima. The sonus medius is the name for a vowel which occurs in certain positions, unstressed. For example, we have an older spelling for maximus as opposed to the later maximus. And then we have decumus instead of decimus. Now, it seems that already in the first century AD, this sound was changing from what was more easily and properly represented by the u vowel letter into something which sounded closer to the e vowel letter. 
Most likely, during the whole classical period, it was changing for a lot of speakers, and there was probably a lot of variety. Was it a schwa? Was it something else? It's difficult to say, but I like how this character has these more archaic features. Clearly, it's a decoma, nice and rustic, nice and old fashioned. The laconic nature of the way that these characters speak, especially if they're military, always strikes me as very authentic. The idiomatic usage feels a lot like Caesar and many other authors of the period. Here we see the older third person plural perfect ending, ere, instead of erunt or erunt. There were three. The oldest was ere, but there was also erunt. And those two get mixed together to create the longer erunt that were normally taught in textbook Latin. But all three forms are common in classical Latin, with the ere being a form which is a little bit more typical of archaic Latin. And again, this character, if he's speaking more rustic Latin, we might expect him to have more archaic features. Here he says ad modum instead of ad modum. Now, this isn't necessarily wrong. Well, the penultimate stress rule would say that it should be ad modum, because the mo is a short syllable, and therefore the third to last syllable is where the stress should be, ad modum. But Aulus Gellius actually says that in his own time period, words like afatin and ad modum are pronounced normally on the second syllable, afatin and ad modum but that some preserved an older pronunciation, even in the 2nd century AD, which was admodum or afatim for both words. Therefore, I would say, hey, this is another interesting variety, which seems to actually have existed in the ancient classical Latin period, and there's no reason it can't exist for this particular character, Metellus. <laughs> Here we see this character dropping a final S again. Whether it's deliberate or accidental, it seems plausible that this could be happening for some speakers in this time period. I like how there's a little voicing here on the prenzavimus. Uh, this actor is probably not Italian. He sounds like he has some kind of an accent, could be German or Hungarian. And it just makes it sound a bit more foreign, because we would expect to hear prehensavimus and not prehensavimus. But I think it sounds interesting and adds a little bit of variety and forwardness to this clearly non-native Latin-speaking character. <laughs> I love the usage here of habere with the past participle. This construction exists in classical Latin in certain more restricted uses. Naturally, this usage of the verb to have, habere, with the past participle, is something which anticipates the usage of what's called passato prossimo in Italian, and there are similar constructions in other Romance languages. I have known, for example. And so we have a little bit of variety of normal speech being put into this very phrase. Wait! Kurok! Utilut sempiterni caesaris referam, proditionem amo, sed proditorem non laudo. Inexpedita scandite aquos! This reminds me of the story of Tarpeia. According to legend, Tarpeia was a girl who betrayed the city of Rome by letting the Sabines into the gates. And she did it because she wanted those things that they had on their left arms, which was the armilla, a shiny kind of gold bracelet. Once Tarpeia let the Sabines into the city of Rome, she asked for what was on their left arms, and they gave it to her, which were their shields, and they killed her. And they did that because the Sabines here in this legend or myth are representing a Roman ideal, which is then expressed here by Metellus, repeating the words of Caesar. Proditionem amo, sed proditorem non laudo. Egedum confige.
Here Metello says agedum instead of agedum. Since this vowel is short, I would characterize this as the only real mistake I've heard, considering how well these actors in general, and this one in particular, has done with all this material, they really get all of my praise. I think it's really important to remember that these actors are doing something very difficult. Their job is to know their lines, memorize them, and deliver them in a way that's believable. I think they do that. I think they do that very well in this show. If they get some little things wrong here and there with Latin pronunciation, well, you know, we just have to forgive them. But since I thought you would be curious to know what I thought about it, I went ahead and made this video for the third episode. Are you interested to know what I think about the Latin in episode four? If that's so, leave a comment below and let me know. For now, Walete. Well,